Hi, everybody. So now I want to continue. I want to look at another example of a random variable, but this time in the continuous case where we have to deal with integrals and things aren't quite as straightforward. So uh, the situation I want to look at is I want my sample space to be R2 and the picto, the plane. And the picture I have in mind is that we're making measurements uh, of the temperature using a thermometer that has randomly dis normally distributed errors. So measurements with randomly distributed errors. And I'm going to uh, normally randomly distributed errors. And with variance one, I'm just going to do that to get rid of a variable. And we looked at this case when we talked about independence. And so uh, an outcome is a pair x1, x2 in R2. And the probability density function that comes out in this situation is that the probability that um, a point lies in a particular set is 1 over 2 pi integral over that set of e to the minus norm x squared over 2 dx1 dx2, where x is the vector x1, x2. And uh, just to give you maybe something a little bit more concrete to hang on to, here's a picture of um, what's going on in this situation. Uh, this shows a collection of points. They're not centered, uh, yeah, they're they, uh, with um, variance one. And so each of these points is, is a combination of errors uh, from the two independent measurements. So for instance, this point here uh, means that you were off by something like 1.2 on your first measurement and you were off by three on your second measurement. And as you can see, the points are clustered around 0, 0, but they're spread out in roughly a circle. And that's because the level in circles, they get less and less uh, dense as you move outward. And that's because the level curves of this probability measure are circles. e to the minus norm of x squared over 2 is, uh, has level, it, this function here is constant on circles. So they're The, uh, the density decreases on, uh, as you move outward, and it only depends on the or or distance. Now, if you want to sort of study this situation, um, it's a little hard to work with the two independent variables. And what you might be interested in knowing about is what's the absolute value? What's the norm of the error? In other words, how does the norm of x which is the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared, behave. And this is an example of a random variable. Uh, because as I mentioned, a random variable is like a, is a measurement or a function. So we can consider the function from our space x to r, which is just f of x is the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared, which is norm x squared. And to ask how this is distributed, one, one thing that we could ask is, what is the chance that the norm of the error is within r of the origin? So what is the probability that the norm of x is in the set 0, r? That measures the chance that these, these two independent errors, when you take the sum of their squares and take the square root, lands in this interval from 0 to r. Now, that means we need to to apply the definition of this probability, this is the probability 
of the set of xy, or x1, x2, such that the norm of that vector is less than r and bigger than or equal to 0, which is automatic. But we know the definite, we know how to compute this probability. This is the integral, it's 1 over 2 pi, times the integral over the set norm x1, x2 less than r of e to the minus norm x squared over 2 dx1 dx2, because that's how the probability distribution function works. The, the chance that x1, x2 lands in this circle is the integral over that circle of the probability density function. And um, what's nice about this situation is we can actually do this integral um, by putting this into polar coordinates. So this is actually, if you think about it, the integral of 1 over 2, we'll get to practice our calculus. We're integrating over the circle of radius r. So the circle of radius r in polar coordinates has theta going from 0 to 2 pi, and it has rho, which I'll use for the radial coordinate, going from 0 to r. And the function is e to the minus r squared over 2, and dx1, dx2 is r, is rho, d rho, d theta. And um, this is actually a doable integral. And in fact, the, the, if we do the theta integral first, we're just integrating a constant from 0 to 2 pi d theta, which is 2 pi, and that cancels the 2 pi. So that just leaves us with the integral from 0 to r of e to the minus r squared over 2, sorry, rho squared over 2, rho d rho. And that's a, a, an integral that we can do if we let u equal minus rho squared over 2, then du equals minus rho d rho. And this is just the integral from 0 to r of e to the u du, which is 1 minus, and I, this is, uh, I should be careful here, this r, this is rho equals r. So this is 1 minus e to the u, which is 1 from um, rho equals 0 to rho equals r, which is 1 minus e to the minus rho squared over 2 from rho equals 0 to rho equals r. And uh, that's just 1 minus e to the minus r squared over 2. So um, we actually have a nice formula for the, uh, for the probability that our error lands in that particular region. Um, and, and we can refine this a little bit more because uh, this is the probability that the norm of x is less than r. And so if we think about that, this is a, um, what is the probability that x is between r and r plus epsilon? Well, it's the probability that it's less than r plus epsilon and not less, not less than r. And if you take the limit of that as epsilon goes to 0 uh, and divide by epsilon, what you're doing is you're taking the derivative of this function. And so you get the associated probability density function. Maybe I won't, I won't write this and I will just say it. For those of you that have maybe taken a little probability, this may make more sense. But the associated density function is uh, just the derivative of this, which is r e to the minus r squared over 2. The point being that, um, that the that's consistent with this formula for p because now the if this is the density function, the probability that uh, the norm of x is less than r should be the integral 
uh, let's say big R, R goes from zero to big R of R e to the minus R squared over two dr, which, it, which is exactly the calculation that we did before. Okay, now can we see what's going on here? Let's look at an example. First of all, um, here is a picture of what happens if we actually take the, um, the, the data that I showed you at the beginning, the, um, the dots, and calculate for those dots how far they are from the origin and make, make a histogram. So in this picture, you see the dots sort of clustered around the origin. And in this picture, the, the height of the bar tells you what percentage of the dots are at that distance from the origin. And uh, so, as you can see, they're clustered, the dot, the bars are highest around one, and then it sort of tails off that, so that there are relatively few points which are farther away. Well, suppose I superimpose upon this. So this is, the, if you want to know the density of points, this is the density of points near one, it's sort of this bar at one out of all the other ones. And of course, this is experimental data, so it's noisy. Suppose I now take that exact picture and superimpose upon it this density function that we just computed. That looks like this. Oops. Did I lose it? There we go. I guess I did lose it. I have to go back and get it. Sorry. Uh, here it is. And if you look at this picture with the superimposed function r e to the minus r squared over 2, you can see that the height of the bars closely follows the density function. And if you were to um, take more and more and more points and compute their distance to the origin and look at the distribution, then you would see them more and more closely following this red line. And uh, this red line, is, this function is called the chi distribution. That we don't won't need that necessarily. It's called the chi distribution. But for those of you that have heard about the chi squared distribution, uh, this is the square root of the chi squared distribution. So um, there's a calculation uh, involving a random variable for where the underlying uh, uh, sample space is the real numbers, and um, we're interested in looking at the density function associated with a measurement, which is the distance to the origin.